All right, um, good day everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you back to our chemistry lab uh, today. Uh, within the limited possible time, our objectives are just two today. First of which is to enlighten you about the laboratory apparatus and their uses so that whenever you see questions on that, you will be able to identify the laboratory apparatus and what these laboratory apparatus are used for. Equally, there are some questions that may require you to sketch or draw the diagram of each of these laboratory apparatus. And, and lastly, uh, the other objective is to tell you about gases, their identification and their properties. Whether you like it or not, chemistry practical is subdivided into three sections. Section one is quantitative analysis. Section two is qualitative analysis. And section three is all about your general knowledge in chemistry. So I don't want to waste our time today. We are not going to do qualitative and quantitative today. The objective of today's presentation is mainly for the general knowledge parts. And this is all about the laboratory apparatus and their uses. In fact, that is what you need to know right from year 10, which is equivalent to SS1. So, laboratory apparatus. We'll be looking at 21 laboratory apparatus today. 21 most important laboratory apparatus today. The number one laboratory apparatus is test tube. Test tubes. This is used in qualitative analysis. Whenever you are performing test observation and inference, qualitative, quality, this test tube is what you are going to use in qualitative analysis to carry out reactions in solutions. If you are told to mix acid with base, you are, if you are told to miss, I mean to dissolve a salt in water, this is what you are going to use. In qualitative analysis, you use test tubes. So that is the purpose. Number two, boiling tubes. This is used to eat substances. Unlike this, this is bigger, longer, and stronger. So this can repel it much more than this. So this is what we call boiling tubes. You may be asked, this is how it looks like. It is used to eat substances. This is used to perform qualitative analysis. Do you understand? To perform qualitative analysis to carry out uh, uh, reactions in solutions. Thereabouts, we have a flat bottom flask. Flat bottom flask. FBF. It is used for carrying out reactions during preparation of gases. This is what flat bottom flask looks like. It's, it's, it's having a flat bottom. That is why it is called flat bottom flask. It is used for carrying out reactions in the preparation of gases. Underline that preparation of gases. Then we have what we call distillation flask. This is what distillation flask is all about. You may be told to draw it. This is what it's all about. Had it been we have enough time, I would have sketched each of these for you. But with this, I believe you can sketch it on your own. This is what we call uh, distillation flask. It doesn't have a flat bottom. It has a round bottom. It has a round bottom. So it is used for carrying out simple distillation the separation techniques, simple distillation. I believe you know what that is all about. Then we have beakers. Beakers are used for holding and measuring volumes. They are of different sizes. This is um, a size of 100 mil, and this is a size of 600 mil. They are beakers. They are used for holding. You can use it to hold any liquid that you want to hold. For instance, any reagent in the laboratory, ammonia, sodium hydroxide, dilute HCl, H2SO4, nitric acid, and the list goes on. You use this to hold volumes, to hold solutions, and of course, to measure, because it is graduated. It is graduated. Yet again, we have round bottom flask. For carrying out reactions during preparation of gases, it is similar to flat bottom flask, only that its, it's, uh, its bottom is round. So they are used for the same purpose, for carrying out reactions during the preparation of gases. So the, the, thereafter, we have, um, we have um, evaporating dish. Yes, this is my evaporating dish. Evaporating dish, this is how it looks like. This is how it looks like. It is used for separating solids from liquids in a solution by eating. 
You understand? Whenever you want to separate, for instance, there is you want to separate mud, mud from water, or you want to separate solid from liquid, for instance, sand from water. You can easily put this the mixture into this evaporating dish, put it on a bunsen burner, boil it until the extent that the water evaporates. So it is called evaporating dish. This is how it looks like. Then we have separating funnel. This is using the extraction and separation of two immiscible liquids. Immiscible liquids. This is called what? This is called separating funnel. It is used in the separation, do you understand? And the what? And the extraction of two immiscible liquids. For instance, petrol and water, they are immiscible. Any polar solvent and non-polar solvents, solvents that are having different characteristics, they are immiscible. How do that, how do that uh, how, what is the mode of operation? The mode of operation is that the two miscible liquids will be poured into this uh, separating funnel. Of course, the liquid of higher density will come down and the liquid of lower density will float on top of the one of the higher density. And thereafter, you open this tap so that when, when it is settled, you open this tap so that the ones of higher density can come out. Immediately, the last drop of the liquid with higher density is out. You close it. Thereafter, thereby, what you have actually done is that you have actually separated the immiscible liquid from each other. So the purpose is extraction. You have extracted one liquid from the other and you have also separated the liquid from each other. Then, we have what we call um, measuring cylinder. This is used to measure volume of solutions. Volume of solutions, measuring cylinder, like you can see, they are graduated as well. They are of different sizes. We have that of 10 mil and so on and so forth. So it is used particularly, specially for measuring volumes of solution. Then we have a gas syringe. This is used for gas syringe, as the name implies. It is not, it is not whatever you are calling it in the medical industry. This is what we call gas syringe in chemistry. It is mainly used for collecting and measuring gases. For collecting and measuring gases. Then we have what, what I call uh, FTC, FCT, Federal Capital Territory. Of course, it's not Federal Capital Territory. It's called Fire Clay Triangle. Fire Clay Triangle, FCT. Or you call it what? TPC. Triangular pipe clay. Triangular pipe clay. It is used for supporting the crucible on a triple stand. This is a triple stand. Of course, we don't want a direct supply of heat to the triple stand. So this is used to support crucible on a triple stand. So this is called uh, FCT, fire clay triangle, or, or what? It is also called um, triangular pipe clay, TPC. Not uh, PTC, teophenyl, not TPC, teophenyl uh, dicarbamide, but what? TPC, triangular pipe clay. All right. Then we have spatula. Spatula, this is spatula. This is how it looks like. In case you are told to sketch it, it is used for taking small quantities of solid substances. For instance, you want to take salt. This is what you are going to use to take salt on the day of your experimental chemistry, of your practical chemistry, whenever you are performing qualitative analysis. So it is used to scoop or to take small quantities of solid substances. And then we have test tube holder. This is used for holding test tubes. You know, there are some times that you need to pour chemicals or to pour reagent into test tubes. So that to avoid direct contact with your hand, you can use this to hold the test tube together. After holding the test tube, then you do what? You pour the solutions into the test tube. It is also used to hold boiling tubes whenever you are eating. Whenever you are eating, you don't want direct contact. There's a wooden type apart from this iron one. And this is called TIS2 funnel. It is used for the intermittent supply of acids during reactions. It is used for the intermittent supply of acids and other liquids to reaction plants. Thereafter, we have a um, tripod stand. This is tripod stand. It is used to support beakers during what? During reactions. You know, whenever you are boiling, there's something you have to place the beakers on. What you have to place the beakers on is tripod stand. 
And then we have bonsin burner. This is bonsin burner. This is how it looks like bonsin burner for eating of substances. It is supplied, the, the source of the fire is gas. So you open this knob and you light it. Then you can use it to do what? To eat substances. This is bonsin burner. And then we have conical flask. This is conical flask. It is used for holding liquid during reaction. For instance, acid based titration. You pour the base inside of this and you titrate. So, what you are actually doing is that you are using this to hold liquid during reaction. Thereafter, we have a wire gaze. This is wire gaze to reduce direct heat. Do you understand? It is, of course, you use this to reduce direct heat as well. But there are some other times that this and this cannot work for the same purpose. Do you understand? If you want a larger surface area to be mounted on the tripod stand, you use this. A smaller surface area to be mounted, you use this. So in a nutshell, this is used to reduce direct heat when placed on a, when you have something placed on a what? On a tripod stand. Thereafter, we have light big condenser. We also call it refined condenser. This is used for what? It is used for condensation of vapor to liquid during distillation. Then whenever you, you know, the, uh, this, in this part of the, this is where ordinary liquid will pass through water and the water will come out of this. In a nutshell, it is cooling down the vapor and that is condensation of vapor. This is called light big condenser or what, or you call it refined condenser, but it is commonly called and preferably called light big condenser if you are asked. What is the laboratory apparatus that you can use to condense vapor? It is light big. There has been a question like that. It is light big condenser. And then we have wash bottle. This is what we call wash bottle. Wash bottle in the sense that it is used for collecting liquids. For instance, um, distilled water, ethanol. It is used for collecting any liquid. This is what we call wash bottle. And then we have volumetric flask. This is called volumetric flask, volumetric flask. It is also called standard flask. It is used to prepare standard solutions. Standard solutions, what does that mean? Solutions of known volumes, known volumes, known concentration. So these are the lists, and this is what we call pipettes. This is what we call pipettes. Do you, do you understand? This is 25 mil pipettes. This is used to soak uh, the titrant, titrant in all level cases they are used to solve bases, but actually all titrant are not bases. There are some titrant that are acids, depending on your purpose of the experiment. So in a nutshell, in a nutshell, not to waste our time, these are the major common laboratory apparatus. We have Kips apparatus as well. Kips apparatus is used. To, to, to supply gases intermittently, wherever it is needed. Keeps apparatus, it's also used to supply gases wherever it is needed. Gases like hydrogen sulfide, gases like hydrogen itself, and the list, and the list goes on. So, these are the lists of apparatus and their uses. Thereafter, we move on to gases, gases and their identification. It is expected of you, to be able to identify gases. Uh, when we get there, we'll see how we can relate gases with anions. How we can relate gases with anions. Basically, under qualitative analysis, we have 10 gases. We have 10 gases. These 10 gases are under three subdivisions or three types. We have the neutral gas, we have the acidic gas, and we have the basic gas. Neutral gas, they are three in number. Acidic gas, they are six in number. Basic or alkaline gas is just one. So in the sum, in some total or in the, in, the, in the summation, we have ten types of gases. Now it is expected of you to identify these gases by their name, their physical properties, and their chemical properties. Number one, we want to look at neutral gases. Neutral gases like what? Like hydrogen. Hydrogen gas is a neutral gas. Oxygen. Oxygen gas is a neutral gas. Water vapor is a neutral gas. What are their properties? Three of them, they are colorless and odorless. They are colorless and odorless. I don't think you have ever seen oxygen with the color of oxygen before. It is impossible. 
the odor of oxygen that you're breathing is impossible. Whenever you are perceiving uh, an aroma, it is not the aroma of oxygen. It is the aroma of a particular delicacy. Do you understand? So in a nutshell, oxygen, hydrogen, and water vapor, there are three different gases that are neutral, and they have the following qualities, or the following physical properties. They are colorless, and they are odorless. They are colorless, and they are odorless. Now, how do I distinguish between these three gases? And of course, both of, uh, the three of them, they have the same effect on litmus paper. What is the effect? They do not change litmus paper. They have no effect on litmus paper. It is not going to change red to blue, nor blue to red. It has no effect on litmus paper. Now, how can I differentiate between these three gases? It is impossible that you have um, twins or triplets without having a parameter or a way by which you can differentiate them. Number one is about um, water vapor. There are two ways by which you can differentiate or you can identify water vapor. It's either you are using copper or white anhydrous copper two tetra ounces of a six, or you use cobalt two chloride. White anhydrous copper two tetra ounces of a six, when brought in the presence of water vapor, or when, when water vapor reacts with white anhydrous copper two tetra ounces of a six uh, salt, it turns it into blue. It turns it into blue. It turns it into blue. There are objective questions like that. That how do you test for the presence of what? For the presence of what? For the presence of water vapor. You can use your what? Anhydrous copper two tetra oxo sulfate six. And at the same time, you, uh, you can also use a uh, blue cobalt two chloride. It's going to change blue cobalt two chloride into pink. It's going to change uh, blue cobalt two chloride into pink. So that is water vapor. Then secondly, we have hydrogen gas. Like I said earlier, on colorless and odorless. Hydrogen gas burns with a pale blue flame to give a blue, I mean, to give a pop sound. A pop is like you are popping the, 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 the way they pump champagne. The way they pop, pop champagne. So when hydrogen gas is burning with, in, in, in the presence of flame, it burns with a blue flame. It gives a blue flame. Do you understand? And that is why sometimes you, when you see the, 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 the blue in the fire, like for instance, in any fire that you are seeing, assume, assume that what you are seeing is hydrogen gas. However, when it is burning, it burns with a pop, 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 pop sound. Thereafter, the second part by which you can identify hydrogen gas is that, is that it extinguishes a wooden, a burning wooden splint. For instance, for instance, when a, a, a wood is burning, when you bring it in the presence of, if there's hydrogen gas here, you bring the wood that is burning inside this, it will extinguish, it will, it will, it will die off. Do you understand? So number one is that it burns with a blue flame to give a pop sound, and of course it extinguishes, it extinguishes what? It extinguishes uh, a, uh, a burning wooden flame when you bring it in contact. Then we have oxygen, the last of the neutral gas. It is, it is, it, it is absorbed in colorless alkali pyrogalo. There is a solution in chemistry. There is a solution what that we call uh, alkaline pyrogalo. Alkaline pyrogalo, wherever oxygen is brought in contact into this alkaline pyrogalo, it will turn to brown. Ladies and gentlemen, a blood that is having oxygen is already is usually reddish brown. Consider it that way. So whenever you are having oxygen, there is life. So alkali pyrogalo is colorless. But when you you immerse or you introduce oxygen into alkali pyrogalo, it will turn brown. So that is one way by which you can identify oxygen. Number two by which you can identify oxygen is that it supports combustion, or we say it rekindles a glowing splint. Remember, hydrogen doesn't support combustion. Hydrogen kills fire. Hydrogen extinguishes eh, a glowing splint. But oxygen rekindles a glowing splint. Then we have acidic gases. Acidic gases, like I said earlier, there are six in number. We have CO2, we have SO2, we have H2S, 
we have NO2, we have Cl2, and we have um, HCl. These are the six acidic gases. Let me come again. We have carbon four oxide. We have